Hello everyone, my name is Tina. I'm head of design of Victoria Designs. A bit earlier, I was cutting up a box that I had saved. I thought I could do something with the cardboard and I thought, hmm, what if I'm going to challenge myself? So I cut up an empty box of instant mashed potatoes. I know it's not very healthy. So could I make something bookish, booklet-y with this? Challenge accepted. And I'm just gonna see what I'm gonna end up with. I had a few vague ideas but what the overall outcome would be <laughs> i had no idea at all and i know myself if i'm going to munch over every little detail this is gonna take weeks to make and i thought no make it in an hour two hours most and that's it so you're gonna have to make quick decisions and that's what i did were all my decisions good decisions no <laughs> did i like the outcome yeah kind of happy did I have fun doing this? Oh yeah. So guys, it's about, it's not about the end result. It's about the journey. It's about doing the crafting, just fiddling with things and see how they work or don't work. So what? So let me take you on my crafty journey with quick decisions and vague ideas and let's see what I end up with. Okay. So I started with this box and I cut out a piece from one of the sides and that is eight and a half by five and three quarters of an inch and I just fold it in half. Let's start with make it kind of bookishly <laughs> and I use my bone folder to really make the crease very nice there both sides. Okay and then I pick some papers that I have in my Victoria Design stash from years ago and just try out what would be the best to use. Yeah, and I kind of wanted to use this beautiful old steampunk typewriter thingy, but in the end I chose this one. And I'm just adding some glue. Yeah, I fast forward here because the glue wasn't really coming out of the bottle. So uh, I didn't want you to look at me getting glue out of the bottle for five minutes. So. And then I place it on the back of the paper, making sure there was still some room left on the sides for the tabs that I could fold over at the end. Spread it out. I can use my bone folder to really make sure it's flat and it sticks and the glue gets spread out in the back. And I noticed that <laughs> I glued my piece of cardboard a little bit crooked, but that's okay. And then I trim off the edges a little bit, so I'm left with half an inch on each side. So these tabs I can fold over at the end, half an inch is about 12 millimeter, one centimeter. It doesn't really matter. The side of tabs that you would like are perfect. Then I cut off the corners and I leave just a hair um, at, at the corners themselves, so they will be covered. But the hair is enough. This isn't very thick cardboard, so it really doesn't have to be a millimeter or so. Um, less is perfectly fine. Then I fold over the tabs. I really like to pre-fold them. And then I thought I'm going to use glue or tape for the tabs, and I chose tape, but either one is perfect. So I'm gonna put some tape on all the tabs. Close to the cardboard, that's where you want to tape. You see my tape is too small for the tabs, but okay. Really doesn't matter here. And um, yeah, I'm just applying the tape on the four sides. And make sure that the tape sticks, because it's very important. And I chose to remove the tape from the long sides first. And just really pull the paper when you fold over the tabs so you don't have any air gaps in between. So far so good. And after I did the long ones, I am doing the short sides. I used to do long, short, long, short. I don't know why, but it's not symmetric this way. So I changed that. Here is the last one. Looks pretty good so far. 
And then I am making a very bad decision here. <laughs> I'm trying to fold this over. And I should know that the paper would rip. And it did. Look at that. Indeed. I knew this. Why wasn't I thinking about that? But no worries. I'm just going to add a little bit of reinforcement. I'm just going to cut a piece of fabric. To be honest, tear a piece of fabric so it would be nice and shabby. I'm measuring out how long I would like it. And I just made sure there was a little bit left to fold over the top and the bottom. I didn't see any need to also cover the inside of this tiny spine. And yeah, this way is a lot more pretty. I'm just going to use some tacky glue. Yeah, I usually use tacky glue for a lot, for most things actually. And I'm adding some glue at the back of the spine to reinforce it. And you see I'm struggling with my glue bottle. It's probably that the glue gets thicker over time. I should craft more. That's the sign. Yeah. And I'm using this brush to spread out the glue because otherwise I would have these thick clumps coming through the fabric for sure. So this way it will be evenly spread. I'm actually thinking about buying a silicone brush to um, do this. They have that for makeup and I think it's going to work fabulous for spreading glue in craft projects as well. Yeah, and I folded it. It wasn't a great idea because the fabric moved and made a huge wrinkle. So I spread out the wrinkle so you won't see it anymore. And I thought, let's get this dry first. So I had it dried. And now when I fold it over, the fabric is in its place and it only leaves a very small wrinkle, which is totally fine by me. And I'm going to fold over the little flaps. I'm actually going to try a glue stick this time, just a regular glue stick. Uh, to see if that works, it would be a lot easier, actually. So, and it does seem to work. There, nice in place. And now I'm going to add some ink to the edges to make it a little bit more vintagey. Also over the edges of the fabric here. Could have done that with the piece of cloth, a piece of fabric that I used in the center as well. So the sides, but now I can't really reach them anymore without smudging all over the paper. And in the corners, I make sure I don't have too much ink on my blender left. And I just like to make this circular movement in the corners to, to really make it vintagey. It's very important to not have too much ink on your blender there so you can really build up layers these vintage layers in the corners and I also do the spine crease there happy with that and now I'm going to add some ribbon to close the booklet or whatever this is gonna be So I add some pieces of double-sided tape on the edge and I make sure I have a little bit of space left between the edge and the tape because about eight of an inch will not be covered. And I use this piece of paper just to make sure they're lined up properly without me having to measure the center. It's centery enough, but it's very important that both sides are equal, of course. Then I add the ribbon. And yeah, then I notice I had the shiny side on the inside. So I turn it around and I make sure I have it the same way on the other side as well. There, the same length. And yeah, I wanted to use this typewriter thingy so badly, maybe too badly. So I'm now measuring how much, how big this should be to cover the inside. 
I try to find the most centered image with these measurements. Of course, you can always find another paper with a pattern or something that would be easier to work with. In hindsight, I would have chosen another one. I just wanted to use it so bad because I find it pretty. Okay, then I cut it out to that size. That's what I'm left with. And indeed it fits in the center. And first I'm going to add some ink to the edges. It is already a very dark print, but at least to cover the white sides, the side of the paper, because it's, it's cardstock, it's a very good idea to add some ink. And then I think I made a crucial mistake using double-sided tape for this, because once that is down, it's not coming up, it's there, it's done. I should have used just glue for this, because it is very forgiving, wet glue, And then you can still work with it while it's drying. And I chose to use some tape in the center, uh, tape on the edges and glue in the center. You know what the worst part is? I know all this. What was I thinking? Yep, and then just some glue stick in the center. So now I'm putting the inside covers in place. And what's going to happen is the following. When the paper is stuck with tape, it has no way to go, no room to go. But when you fold it in half, the paper has less room. So you see what's going to happen now, I let it dry for a bit first, is it's going to wrinkle. I'm already trying to smooth out the wrinkles. And the moment I closed that book, I already thought, oh no, what have I done? And that's why I always make the front and the back cover and the spine separately, so they don't have these issues. And yeah, I'm frantically trying to rub out these wrinkles and actually in the end I'm thinking, ah, what the heck. There are better ways to solve this, but I really didn't want to start over again. I didn't want to rip it out and I just made peace with the wrinkles. And now I have some pieces of scrapbook paper that I have uh, in my closet. And they're equally as high as the inside cover here. And, and now I'm actually thinking, what am I going to do with it? How am I going to use it? This is fairly heavy scrapbook paper. I think it's 250 grams. I'm just saying that it doesn't really matter for this. So I am folding these in half, both strips. I'm measuring how wide I want this to come because whatever I'm doing on the inside, I don't want it to come outside of the booklet, outside of the cover. So I am scoring a little bit inside at three and three quarters of an inch. You can measure for yourself where it should be. You can make it larger, smaller. As long as it fits inside the cover and doing exactly the same with the second one. I'm actually turning it around. I'm not sure why, because this is the wrong way to fold it. <laughs> and I'm folding over each side again, and this way I am making pockets. I'm 
then I'm taking some tape for the sides. I'm just going to close the sides like this, the little bit of tape, and then everything you stick in there will be fairly fixated in there. It won't, won't fall out very easily because the pocket will be very tight. There, I did the same thing with the other one and I'm just going to remove the backings. See, in this case, tape is a very, very good idea. It's quick, it's not messy. You can definitely use some glue as well. Before I'm closing it, actually, um, I am going to add some extra ink. It's very, very dark already, but there's still a difference with using the ink or not using the ink. That's totally up to you. Okay, I'm removing the backings and voila, there's a pocket. It's that simple. So I'm now making two inserts that are exactly the same. And I'm going to sew them in the cover like that. And then I can put a lot of stuff into these pockets. And I'm actually adding some more pockets here. I found these steampunk thingies in my Victoria Designs print box. Yeah, I've printed out so much over the years. And I don't throw them away. I can always use them again. Now I'm actually measuring out how big these are. These are actually jewelry cards. And now I'm contemplating using the whole thing or only the frame piece. And I'm deciding to only use the frame piece and I'm going to make a pocket out of it as well. So more pockets on the pockets. So I'm cutting the other pieces off. I'm definitely going to save them because they're pretty pieces of old looking paper. I'm definitely going to ink these edges because it's lighter and also, yeah, the side of the paper is pretty white. I'm going to apply the pockets as followed, making sure the heavy gears are at the bottom. And I already see I can better use some thinner tape here. You see the one is 3 eighths of an inch, this is only a quarter of an inch or six millimeters. Because this is a small pocket, there will be more room in the pocket. The wider the tape, the less pockets you have. So I'm just applying tape on the sides and on the bottom. And I'm thinking, am I going to cut out a notch in the top? And I think, no, I'm not going to do that because it would disturb the actual image. But you can definitely do it. And I'm making sure that it will be as wide from the bottom as it is from the sides. And now I have an extra pocket and I'm doing that on the other one as well. And if I was a little bit more thoughtful, I would have put it on the back instead of the front because now it's going to be twice the same when you open the booklet. See, it will be pocket, pocket, no pocket, no pocket. So um, yeah, I would have, should have put it in the back. I realized that right there, right then. I even thought maybe I can add these as extra pockets, but I'm not going to do that. And now it's time to sew these in. I'm still really upset about the wrinkles. Okay, I am going to punch some holes. I am keeping it really, really simple here. I wanted to do something else than I usually do. I wanted more holes. And I'm going to some sort of a double rudding stitch here. Very easy, really. And I'm 
going to make six holes, I think. Yeah, six holes equally from the sides. I leave a quarter of an inch from each side. And then I have room for six holes and they are all one inch apart. There. And the cover is already bigger, of course. So I'm actually going to turn it around. It will make create better looking holes since I'm going through the whole spine. So I'm starting to measure from 3 eighths of an inch from the top. And I'm also making holes every inch and then I'm left with 3 eighths of an inch on the other side as well. So making sure the holes are a little bit bigger so my needle can go through very easily. For the sewing part, I'm going to make this as easy as possible to follow. So I'm actually going to weave. So I have this um, piece of twine. It's really thick, so I'm going to make it thinner. I'm going to show you how. I have more than enough for twice the length, so I made sure I had enough. So I'm now dividing the strands. I'm just unraveling it to see how much many strands are left and, and it's it's made up out of three other strands and I think I'm only going to use one of these three strands I'm just unraveling and keeping my thumb and my um, first finger open and this way you can unravel it just keep unraveling it, unraveling it, and keeping the rest of the twine, the two other strands apart for some other projects. And the one strand is thin enough to use. I'm going to use a embroidery needle. And I'm literally going to weave up and down and up and down and up and down. That's it. And then when we're at the end, we're just going to just turning back and do the same thing. So it's pretty easy. I'm going to start from the outside in at the top hole. And I'm going to through the I'm going through the top holes of the two inserts as well. If you have a top and a bottom image on your cover, make sure the top is the top, etc. And now I'm going back in. So I'm starting to weave. In the beginning, you're going to have to find your holes, but in the end, everything is fixed. And actually, I'm going to add a little clip on the knee, on the thread so it won't fall out. And I leave quite a few inches, like four or five inches, I think four, as a tail. I'm going to back out and back out the cover as well. Yeah, in the beginning is a bit of searching, at the end it's, it's also fixated, you can just go right through. It's just the first ones are a little bit... Uh. <laughs> so, and now I'm going to go back in, just weaving. And back out. And back in. Yeah, it's that easy. See, it's already going faster. Make sure to really pull on the thread and back out again. This is the last one. And we're going to go back in again, but we're just going to go back because it's the end of the book. So we're going to go back in the other way. I'm 
and back out and see I actually all the holes are now lined up and it's so easy to just weave our way back to the end. Nothing weird here. And now we're coming to the end and we're just going to make a knot. Oh yeah, before we make a knot, obviously pull on each piece inside and out just to check if the thread didn't make any loops here and there. It's straight. Just checking it all. There, and if everything is stretched, you can make a knot. I actually think this is very pretty. It's just, yeah, the, the in inside cover I'm not very <laughs> happy with here. And also I'm not sure the typewriter paper was a good idea here, but okay. Quick decisions. There, and now I have my little booklet. And then I had the idea of perhaps because it started to become a little bit steampunk to add some gears to the pieces of twine. But actually I'm I'm so gonna cut cut them off again. <laughs> I really didn't like it. It was out of proportion and they were going to cling into each other all the time. Later on in the video, you will see me cutting them off. But now I am thinking about what to put in the paper and I found these old tickets from our shop. These old um, office tickets with office supplies. I'm just going to cut them out by hand. It's all straight lines, so it's very easy to do. Let's just put them in our pockets. And of course they also fit in the side pockets here. There are a lot of pockets here. And I love that. There we go. Yeah, at this point I'm super annoyed with these. <laughs> I'm just gonna cut them off. And yeah, I think this is the way to go here. You can also start sewing from the inside and then you won't have that problem. You won't see the ends, but I'm, I'm okay with the ends of the twine. I've also found some old tags from our shop that I thought I'm gonna use. Add a little bit of ink. Also cut some more of these tickets. I'm just going to fill this little booklet a bit more. This could be a really lovely gift for someone. Not only the inside, but like, like little cards or little tickets or coupons, like good for one back rub or something, or good for one ice cream. You can put them in here there, but also the folder is a real nice gift as well. And that's it. That's what I made <laughs> with my quick decisions. Good decisions, bad decisions. I had fun, people. Thank you so much for watching this video. It was a pleasure having you following me along. <laughs> Have a really good day.